Now something that's pretty exciting, I've been uh, planting brassica blends back through the early 2000s. I've actually first started planting them in uh, 1999. And what I found with brassica seeds, and we'll talk about some other seeds in another video, is that they have the ability to be thrown on top of the soil and grow with a no-till, with different no-till planting options. And you can have an extremely successful brassica uh, plot. Very easy to grow brassicas. You don't have to till, you don't have to disc, you don't have to certainly drill. And, um, and this is one example right here. Um, now I have a lot of examples going back. If you look up no-till food plot plantings, um, you'll find uh, at least one of my articles right up at the top on Google. And, and, and it's because I've been doing this a long time. I put this content out years, years ago. And so it all ranks up at the top and, um, and it's something that I put a lot of time and, and uh, effort into uh, experimenting with uh, many years ago. So that being said, this is a great example. This is our buckwheat ultimate no-till food plot planting system right now. And what's really cool about this is there, there's a good and bad. And with the buckwheat, I planted the buckwheat seven to eight weeks before we planted on no-till in Nebraska. And then I spread the brassica into the standing buckwheat and then smashed it all down with our Packer Max call the packer. And you can see it's laying here and then we followed up with a glyphosate uh, spraying of two quarts per acre. And you can see it's dead. I mean, this is approximately 11 days later, 12 days later, something like that. And you can see everything's dead. Uh, it's doing really well. And you can see all this, these little brassica plants popping through the buckwheat. Good and bad with this buckwheat system because the buckwheat is full of moisture. The ground was damp. We conserve moisture by not tilling or disking and working up the ground. And so we got immediate germination on this and then our beans and peas over on the other side. So that's great. The problem is we haven't had rain for about 10 days. So you'll see some damage on these brassicas starting to come in. The smaller the seed, the more they can be damaged by a lack of moisture. Like I said, we haven't had the rain for almost two weeks now. We keep min missing opportunities. We need rain desperately bad here. And you can see some of the yellow spots starting to take place on the brassica leaves. Some of them are turning yellow, white, and especially the brassica that's more exposed over in here where we didn't have the heavy buckwheat. Um, it's even worse because it doesn't have that almost like a nurse crop of dying buckwheat that's dead and decaying straw on top. And you can see, I mean, this is grind, it's crunchy. It's just laying there. You can see the soil. And so we accomplished what we wanted. We wanted to conserve soil mo moisture. That's why we got um, immediate germination. And, and then we wanted straw to hold moisture on top of that so we conserve that germination and it helped. We wanted dead and decaying weeds and buckwheat, whatever's in here, that accomplished right away. When you crush that buckwheat over, most of it dies. And then when you follow up with glyphosate, of course, it all dies. Um, so we didn't have to worry about erosion if we have any hard rains like last year. We didn't have to till and disc and bring up more weed seeds. So we have a really clean ground here of no weeds. Our brass is coming in but we desperately need rain. Always, we've eventually had enough rain. I've had better brassica crops than others, but when you get into August, dog days of summer, you also get those thunder showers, and we just need a thunder shower every week or two, and it can keep this going, and especially we get ever-increasing moisture as the fall progresses, and that's a great thing because any of our plots are gonna do really well. I've never had a crop fail, knock on wood, I guess I'm a little worried there's no wood around here to knock on, but, um, but I've never had a failure due to a lack of moisture on my fall crops planted uh, late July, early August. This is one way. Now, I've detailed in other ways how to get no-till brassica. Simply, you spray glyphosate 2,4-D in May, June if needed, and then in July. And that glyphosate, I'm only spraying on the second and third spraying, the 2,4-D only on the first. And, and then I'm taking that, uh, that um, brassica seed and I'm putting it on open, exposed soil and, uh, and it grows extremely well. It sits there. Now, if you don't get rain for about three or four weeks, you're in trouble because that small seed will die. Um, if you get germination, of course, and, and you don't get any rain for three or four weeks, you're in trouble too. I've never had that happen. But that's another way you can plant the brassica. We don't have to use the buckwheat. Buckwheat's nice because you may or may not have to spray in the spring if it looks clean. The buckwheat's going to come in if you have exposed soil, and um, and then you can. This buckwheat is a great weed suppressor, so eventually it takes care of all those weeds that are coming in, shades them out, 
and you can plant into very clean surface, especially the stronger the buckwheat you have. It holds moisture. Um, but it still can be done by spring in May, June, July. And that glyphosate does not hurt the seed. You can put your, people ask me that all the time. You can put your seed down, which is what we do. We spray the same day and, you know, to eliminate any weeds that are there and you get a good a catch. Again, spraying the glyphosate, it's a post-emergent, meaning that plant has to be growing. Once the glyphosate hits the soil, it's neutralized. It only kills what's growing and there's no residual left because it doesn't kill anything. So glyphosate's very um, easy to throw on, not worry about it for future plantings. It doesn't affect them in any way. So that's a second way to plant this. And that's what I've done going back for a long ways. We're showing you some photos there of burning out a field several times, spreading seed on that dead field over a few months and finally having that growth in the end and having a great brassica crop. Now at the same time, once this brassica reaches an age of about three to four weeks, again, we're only at a, a week right now, probably after germination, then once that's up in that three or four inch range, maybe six inches, eight inches, depends on how much rain, then I'm gonna spread 75 pounds of urea per acre on that, and boy, the jump start you get on your brassicas. Think about that, that's nitrogen, so you're putting about, it's 4600 is, is urea, that's about 50 pounds of nitrogen per 100 acres that you spread. We're putting out 75 pounds of uh, urea. So uh, 75 pounds, uh, so it ends up about 37 and a half, 40 pounds of nitrogen per acre. We're doing that at a time in the middle of the brassica growth. So we're getting a great jump start on our brassica. And you can see, we're showing you a picture that I believe it was 2013, uh, one of my brassica crops, where I just took a side-by-side -side picture of um, August 13th, when it had just been germinating for a couple weeks. And then August 31st, I put the urea down on August 13th, and you can see the explosion it took to, to um, August 31st. So um, there's some great things you can do with brassica, great options for no-till, very, very easy seed to get a no-till growth on. And that would include seeds like clover too, chicory does really well, but brassica is a great option for no-till. You don't have to have really any equipment other than a sprayer and a handheld broadcaster, even a handheld sprayer works. And uh, you can see with our ult ultimate no-till, man, it's really coming in well. We just need rain. Try this, that you're, it's not too late to plant this year. This is early August, we'll get this video out quick. And even if you're planting brass in mo most locations, middle of August, even up to the 20th August, you can get a great catch in a great field. And you just need to get that seed on the soil. You need to get sunlight to it. And of course, you need weed-free, no competition with some moisture, just a little bit of moisture. I've even found it to germinate with the dew. Try it this year, try it next year. It's a great food plot seed to grow very easily. We use uh, Northwoods Whitetail Sweet Feast Blend. It's a really high quality blend with no fillers in it. And, um, and you know, I've been using that, it's, John told me it's been seven years now. So um, John Comp who owns Northwoods uh, Whitetail. So try that, it's a great seed blend. I've relied on it for seven years, and this is the kind of quality planting we get. And with a little bit of rain, we'll show you this in about a month and show you what it looks like, but it's gonna look good. And uh, it's a system that you can rely on, whether you're using the buckwheat ultimate no-till, or you're just throwing it simply on exposed soil where weeds have been taken care of all summer long.